Hey, what's going on ladies and the gentlemen, my name is Corbett and welcome back to the seventh part of our Succession Crisis campaign, where last time we played the nation of Jesalmer and tried our best to expand as much as we could, and we moved on to Sweden for a short-lived but uh, semi-successful invasion of England. If you haven't been watching the streams, then my voice might sound a little bit different to you, and that's because this is a new microphone. I haven't completely finished setting it up and making it sound perfect, but I think it already sounds a little bit better than the last one, and this is what it's going to sound like from now on. But that aside, if you are new around here and you haven't been watching any of the older ones that's okay you can go back and watch them if you want to but because each episode is unique you don't really have to or if you've been following along but you're not subscribed yet then i do encourage you to go ahead and do that and click the notification icon so that you don't miss the next one and as per usual if we could get this video to 500 likes that would be amazing so without further ado let's see which nation we get next and it looks like it's Augsburg. Now, the problem with Augsburg here is that we are surrounded by three free cities and Austria, allied to one tag, and the other tag is, well, allied to Austria. The only possible way that we could maybe move forward is Frankfurt, except, well, they're allied to Russia. So it's not really possible for us to conquer anything, and we would basically just sit here for the next three years anyway, because he would die in the next three years, so. All those things combined, we're gonna find the new one. And we get... Malwa. Well, funny enough, I guess that could actually maybe work out. We did just sort of visit India, but we do have a war to start off with, so this could be pretty interesting. Our Sultan is 41 years old and is actually really quite good. I mean, he's well-connected, he's a zealot, and he's a scholar. All of those things are actually really good traits to have. Well, zealot doesn't really matter nearly as much because we are an Indian Sultanate, so all of our land is basically going to stay Hindu anyway. Okay, first thing to deal with is definitely going to be this war. I see our troops are absolutely everywhere and in kind of the weirdest stacks imaginable, so we're going to have to fix that. We're also using influence, quantity, and economic ideas, and I'm hoping that the next one might end up being uh, innovative maybe, or religious. Okay, kinda fix the armies. Now at least we can fight properly. It's kind of a weird war to be in in the first place. I mean, we've called in Malacca against us, we're fighting against the Timurids, and Transoxiana just for, what, like, three provinces? There's not really that much to gain out of it, and the idea of having to fight the Timurids over, like, a little bit of land is uh, not something I'm really vibing with. In fact, if you stop and take a second to realize, we're actually rather outnumbered, and we don't have a lot of manpower left, so let's try to finish this as fast as we can. As time goes on, this is only gonna get worse and worse, so yeah, I'm probably just gonna peace out, to be honest. Well, on the bright side, now we can get focused on, you know, catching up with the rest of the world. So to do that, first of all, we're going to need the printing press. So there we go, that's a good start. And unfortunately, because our leader is a zealot, we're not actually allowed to be allied to any heathen or heretic nations. Which means, unfortunately, Vigianagar is going to have to go. I might just replace them with the Timurids instead. That should keep us relatively safe while we modernize and recover from that last war. Actually, right now I could take global trade if I just had enough money, so... I think I'm going to indebt myself to the Jains here, which will give me a couple of low-interest loans. And using those, I will embrace the first institution. And then all we have to do is wait a couple of years until the next one comes in. For the meantime, though, we're actually making quite a good amount of money, not gonna lie. Hopefully by the time the next institution is ready, we'll just have enough money. Of course, being a zealot would also reflect in his policy, so we're going to go with Enforced Unity of Faith and Expansionist Zealotry for the Ulema, which I realize from a gameplay perspective is a pretty bad idea, because obviously it gets rid of some of our tolerance of heathens, which is pretty important because all of our land is not Sunni, but it leads to a slightly more realistic scenario, I guess where the population would obviously not be very happy with a different religion leader who happens to be zealous against them. Okay, now I can embrace the institution, however, it is ridiculously expensive. But because of the uncertainty whether or not this ruler is really going to last that much longer, and I want to get these guys as advanced as possible, I'm going to once again go back to the Jains and ask for a couple more loans. And although that's not enough, it just requires me to have three extras before I can embrace the institution. So now we are finally able to take tech at no additional cost, which at this point is an absolute blessing. So each tech doesn't actually end up costing that much, which will allow us to push through and maybe push ahead. 
Now when it comes to this next idea group, I am given uh, basically a couple of options. Now Well Connected has given me the option between Diplomatic and Influence. We've already taken Influence, so I think that's good enough. And then I have to pick between either Religious or Innovative. Now, this is one of the times I'm going to make the gameplay decision here, because obviously Malwa's not going to convert anything because he's an Indian Sultanate, and they just don't have that sort of AI configuration, and they have basically no reason to. So instead of going to the next option, which normally would be religious, I'm just gonna go ahead with Innovative. Now, it might be a little late for Innovative, considering it's the fourth idea group, but at least it'll help them for hopefully the rest of the campaign, where religious would do absolutely nothing. And I'm actually going to make the Jains even angrier by taking away more loans and giving myself a couple extras. Now that does mean we currently have 21 loans, but first of all I'm going to go ahead and pay off a couple of the ones I shouldn't have taken in the first place, which are, of course, these ones, and maybe a couple of the other ones. This makes my interest low enough to the point where we're still allowed to have positive income, and on top of that I can go ahead and maybe slap down a couple of production buildings, which will help us make just a little bit of extra money. And would you look at that, we are a great power, which would make sense considering we have so much dev, it was really just the tech that was keeping us behind. So here's the thing, I uh, actually don't care if this guy dies or not because he's like slightly below average, so we'll see what happens. Well, rip. Okay, I'm looking around at our state privileges here and I see that we have centralized bureaucracy, which isn't bad by itself, but um, all of our provinces have basically no autonomy now, so I'm probably gonna swap that out for decentralized instead so that we can fit all of our cultures under our belts. Well, not much else for us to look at while we sit here and tack up and modernize and stuff like that. So let's see how the rest of the world's doing. Looks like Sweden went ahead and did exactly as I hoped, taking at least a little bit of land. And Ireland, as expected, has completely exploded. Hmm, it's possible that we could see the fall of Segu here, because I don't think the AI's pathing is good enough to try to figure its way out from all the way over here to West Africa. So we might see them lose a little bit of land there. And Ming's been sitting at zero mandate for quite a long time, but somehow they're like the most stable place on the planet. Also kind of cursed Korea's invading Japan, so that's cool. And hey, there we go, we finally caught up to the current year of tech, although we're quickly gonna fall behind again. At least that's a step in the right direction. As long as we can use this opportunity to bring ourselves far ahead of everyone else in tech, then the AI should theoretically be smart enough to try and attack everyone else around us. You know, in a way that doesn't immediately end in our doom. Because as it happens to be, Everyone around us just kind of hates us, so the institution isn't really going to spread that quickly. So we'll have that 50% tech cost advantage for probably quite a long time, actually. See, there you go. A much better heir. Now, I'm actually glad the old one died. Now, Vijayanagar, you are probably a great friend, but unfortunately, you are on the wrong side of history. And the wrong side of India, in fact. Because you have a couple of trade centers for my home node, and I kind of need those. So this pains me more than you know, because I'll take a stab hit, but unfortunately I'll have to kill you. Now, Bahmanis doesn't really like either of us, so I don't think there's going to be any actual fighting. I'm probably just going to have to sit here and occupy this for a really long time. Now, Vijay has a bunch of transports, which means if he wanted to, he could try to land, but I don't really want him to, so I'm probably just going to fight him. Yeah, that was a pretty good battle. And I'll just continue to improve the economy until eventually I can't build anything that would be worth more than getting rid of a loan. Ooh, manufacturers have come into play. Unfortunately, we don't actually have a whole lot of those. Not even in our capital where it would make the most money. So what I'm going to do is, yes, once again, I'm going to click this button to indebt ourselves into the chains. I'm just a really big fan of these loans, if you can't tell. And we'll use those to, first and foremost, repay all of the really poor interest loans. And over time, with that lowered interest, we'll be able to make enough money to build a couple of manufactories. I also really don't need this stack anymore, it's kind of useless. I'm also going to refit the army a little bit, starting with the fact that I'll get rid of that one weird stack that was there. And we don't really need cavalry anymore, so we'll go ahead and get rid of those. Now when it comes to economies, ours actually isn't too bad, we really just have to make good use of it. Which basically means, boy could I use a couple of manufactories right about now. How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? Okay, at this point it's sort of just getting tiring, like you could just, you can just stop now. You know, it's kind of weird that this entire time Vijay has more heavies than I do, but they've just refused to bring them out of port. Kind of weird considering they could really easily destroy me. 
And there we go, Miltech 20. Finally we're caught up to the most advanced powers in the world. The only problem is of course my ridiculously unbalanced research. But my fighting capabilities are better than anyone else in India, and all we have to do is make sure that the AI will continue that on. All they have to do is pick someone to fight once we're gone, and it is smooth sailing from there on out. Depending on how long we're sitting here though, I might even be the one to declare that war. Ah, and suddenly I spy an opportunity up here in Jaanpur. The Timurids are not willing to help them right now, and Malacca, while they're kind of strong, would take a while to get here, so I'll be ready for them. So let's go ahead and peace out Vijayanagar here. Of course I'm gonna look for a little bit of money where I can. But we're really just here for these two provinces. Okay, now we can build a manufactory. We'll start off with one in our capital. It doesn't give us the most possible money, but we have 41 developments, so it'll help spread the institution as fast as possible. Just before we go to war, let's have another little check up on the rest of the world and see how they're doing. Oh no, the Italians have decided that the best place they could possibly expand into is the Balkans. Well, that's a little bit cursed. And the West Indies are currently rebelling against England, and um, you might think, oh, someone must be helping them. Look how much they're sieging in England. Nope, it's just them. They went all the way from the Caribbean to England just to mess with them. Now that's some dedication. It also looks like something's going on here over in Sweden, so, um... Oh. Oh no. So the Commonwealth and Sweden are fighting over Russia. Russia, who has sworn their loyalty to Sweden. But I mean, not really. Doesn't really matter how this ends, it's just not looking good for Sweden. Anyway... Oof, damn. Well, that kind of sucks. So we didn't get to expand too much on Malwa here, but we did get a lot of other stuff done. Of course, some of the notable things being catching up in the institution, so we don't pay a massive 80% penalty from now on. Uh, we also went ahead and grabbed like, I don't know, four, maybe five admin techs, maybe a diplo tech or two, and like three mil techs. We also picked up Innovative, which I'm assuming the AI will be forced to go ahead and complete whether or not he wants to, so that's cool. And we do have at least a couple of manufactories coming along the way. So even if he is currently in uh, a lot more debt than he started out, um, at least his interest isn't actually that bad because I made sure that they're all the 1% interest loans, which is actually, you know, not terrible at all. Just imagine this would be maybe four times the size if these were regular loans, so they're significantly better. The estates also no longer entirely hate him. I noticed at the beginning they kind of did, so we had to go ahead and fix that. His manpower is coming back, he's easily going to win this war. And he's allied with the Temrids, which are a pretty strong fighting force, even if they seem to be doing something stupid right now. But yeah, generally I think Malwa's gonna do fine from now on. Unfortunately, that was all the time we have for today. We can only get one nation out. Hopefully next time we'll be able to get another two. But be sure to leave a like if you liked the video, leave a dislike if you disliked it. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. Of course, I'd like to give a special thank you to all the people over on Patreon for the month of April. Starting with those we have in the general tier, Quiet Guy, Brendan Arsenault, Ben Greenhagen, Torvald, Dire Avenger, and Farron. Those in the Prince tier, Snow Raven, Rockbox2020, and Robert Kaleno. Those in the King tier, Chewy Shoot and Natsuki. In the Elector tier, TFLJ Martis. And in the Conqueror of Worlds tier, the Watcher. Thank you guys so much for your pledges this month, it means a lot to me.